Mrs. Uh, Prometheus Yunus, Prometheus Siddiqui, Professor Yunus, um, everyone joining from Kampala International University. Um, welcome back to everyone rejoining and greeting to those. Um, welcome back to everyone rejoining and greetings to those who are just tuning in uh, uh, with us today at the 12th business, Social Business Day. Uh, my name is Lamia Hafiz, representing the Impact Hub Global Network from the Impact Hub office in Dhaka. Tonight, it is my pleasure to welcome you to Glimpses of Social Business, where we're going to celebrate the journey and achievements of social businesses from around the world in creating a world of three zeros, zero poverty, zero unemployment, and zero net carbon emission. We'll be doing six segments of this session to highlight individual social businesses from around the world. And throughout the event this week, we will hear from about 30 social businesses, and I'm truly, truly excited. Um, this event will revolve around the theme, building a new civilization before the current civilization destroys us. And we're facing a severe um, threat to humankind. And it is imperative for us to act now and to act together to combat the consequences of global warming, wealth concentration, and unemployment caused by the current profit-centric economy, and of course, the global pandemic that has left us at a crossroad. It is in our hand as citizens of the world to create sustainable civilization, and we believe entrepreneurship and social businesses play a major role in shaping the future of our generation. We will hear from five amazing leaders today about the change that they are creating. Um, to start with, it is my pleasure to invite Celine Vangora, who is joining us today from France. Celine is a business development professional with 13 years of experience in sales for the specialized nutrition and water divisions of Danone. She then chose to dedicate her business skills to a mission where she could have social impact. Driven by the conviction that corporates should take their part, she joined Danone communities as a business developer for water access. Since 2018, she has been giving her energy and passion to grow the social impact of Danone communities, support more social entrepreneurs, and to inspire Danone to achieve more impact. It is my honor to invite her to share an overview of Danone and Danone community actions in social business. Whenever you're ready. Hello, hi everyone. Uh, happy to be here. Uh... Here with you, um, I'm trying to share my screen, but I don't have the capacity to do it. Yeah, uh, it's okay. You can, it you can turn now. Yeah. Okay. Is it fine? Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'm here today to talk uh, about the uh, communities. We are a fund uh, investing in social businesses. We empower innovative social entrepreneurs to achieve sustainable social impact. We do so by investing in social businesses as minority shareholders, and we provide capital, technical, and managerial expertise, as well as networking. Um, I, I think it's interesting to see that Danone communities uh, actually embody the Danone dual project. Um, it started in 1972. It was stated by our former CEO, Antoine Ribou, um, and uh, he said actually that uh, economic and social can go hand in hand. In hand. And uh, in 2007, uh, after the meeting between um, Franck Ribou, Antoine Son, and Professor Mohamed Yunus, the Dan Communities was creating to promote, as I just told you, to promote and support social businesses. Um, and what also is interesting to, to note is that actually uh, Danone communities open the way to more commitment from Danone uh, to promote business uh, in more uh, social and sustainable uh, way. Uh, for example, we have our commitment that we did in, uh, in 2018 to be uh, fully B Corp certified worldwide by 2025. So Danone communities invest in three streams addressing SDG 6 and SDG 2 access to safe drinking water, improved and sustainable nutrition, and sustainable food system. We have today a resilient, growing, and impactful portfolio. Uh, we have 15 businesses in 24 countries, impacting every day 11 million people, and uh, five of, of the businesses part of our portfolio are certified B Corp. 
Um, we also foster cross-fertilization between Danone and entrepreneurs. Uh, first, for example, with our uh, Impact Cube program. Uh, it's a program that um, uh, connects uh, Danone employee who wants to contribute to social uh, to a social purpose, uh, and it connects these employee to the entrepreneur part of our portfolio um, to help them according to their needs. For example, it can be in HR, finance, sales, marketing, operation, etc. Uh, every year we have uh, about 200 Danone who contribute like that to uh, to companies part of our portfolio. And of course, it brings a lot of value to the entrepreneur to help them grow, but it also provides a lot to Danone, uh, for example, by uh, contributing to our employer brand, to our employer brand, and it also brings a lot to the Danone themselves uh, who are part of this program. It gives them um, an entrepreneurial mindset, agility, pride and also what we see is that it um, really helped them uh, to think in a more social way in their day-to-day -day business and it's a way to transform Danone in this uh, in this path. Another example is uh, the, are the learning expeditions that we organize. Uh, we bring together on the field uh, entrepreneurs and Danoneur to share learnings and, um, and uh, co-create and learn uh, together. Uh, then I wanted to point out two social businesses part, part of our portfolio. Of course, uh, Gramin Danone, uh, which is the first social business of Danone communities and of Danone. It's, a start, it's really iconic. Huh? It's the starting point of uh, our fun and it's still inspirates us, inspirates us a lot. Um, today, uh, Grammy Danone has a strong social impact all along the value chain, from the farmers uh, to the consumers who eat every day the fortified yogurts and biscuits, uh, enabling them uh, better health. And lastly, I wanted to tell you uh, more about Nazava. Nazava is one of our latest investments. Uh, Nazava is a social business providing safe and affordable drinking water by producing and selling high quality, low cost household filter. Today, they impact ha nearly half a million people in Indonesia and they want to grow uh, to reach 2 million beneficiaries by 2024. And we are really along their side to help them to grow. Uh, and some concrete example of uh, what we did so far. First, we helped them to get uh, investment ready uh, with uh, some support to help them design their business plan. Uh, we provided them some capital. Um, we provided them uh, technical expertise uh, with the Impact Cube um, program that I just previously explained. Uh, for them, we helped them in uh, digital marketing, e-commerce, HR, and we are about to help them in their B Corp certification. And also, we also help them uh, in, um, to work on uh, one, of their, one of their priority uh, to help them support uh, their water in school program. And so we help them to design their strategy. And also we provided some catalyst fund that we hope will create more, uh, more impact. And here it is to give you a glimpse of, uh, of the Danone communities. Thank you so much, um, Celine, um, for, to you and, your, for you and to your team for doing such an amazing work. Um, I would now like to invite Sadia Hossein, who's joining us from Bangladesh. Um, Sadia Hossein is the Chief Operating Officer at YY Ventures. She specializes in organizational strategy, business development, talent management, and communication. Sadia has worked in multi-sectoral programs and addressing education, youth leadership, livelihoods, gender, climate change, public health, and WASH over the past 11 years through her work with Teach for Bangladesh, Concern Worldwide, and Blacksmith Bank Limited. <clears throat> Sadia excels at scaling businesses, building high-performing teams, and delivering results through people-centered processes, structures, and systems. She thrives in impact-driven organizations and believes that all lives have equal value. She wants to create an equitable world by ending poverty in all of its forms everywhere. And it is my pleasure to hand over the floor to Sadia and hear about her journey at YY Ventures in supporting early stage social businesses for a new civilization. Thank you so much, Lamia. And thanks for that wonderful welcome. Um, ladies and gentlemen, hello from Dhaka, Bangladesh, and welcome to the 12th Social Business Day 
it is my absolute honor to be here today and to talk to you um, and, and learn from you as we talk about how to build a new civilization in our current times. Um, like Lamia shared, um, I represent YY Ventures, which is an organization that imagines a bold new reality for our people and our planet today. Um, to us, a new civilization means a new future where everyone thrives. Um, we call ourselves weavers, entrepreneurs, investors, and innovators who believe that a world of three zeros is not only possible, but it is the only way forward. As a proud uh, Bangladeshi woman working in the development sector for the last 11 years, um, I want to celebrate the remarkable progress that we have made as a nation um, in, in over the last few decades, but our current reality even today is such that more than 20 million Bangladeshis are fighting with poverty, while 16% of our national income is held by the top 1% of the population. Unemployment is a major uh, concern among our youth. Um, while 46% of our graduates struggle to find jobs two years after their graduation. Around 40 million Bangladeshis today don't have access to clean drinking water. And despite producing less than 1% of global emissions that is changing our climate, Bangladesh today ranks seventh on the list of countries most vulnerable to climate devastation. This is unacceptable. And we believe that a more equitable and just world is possible if we foster the power of social business and leverage the talent and innovation that our youth can provide. And thus in 2016, inspired by Professor Muhammad Yunus, we embarked on a journey in partnership with the Yunus Center to fight some of the most pressing challenges of our times. Let me take a moment to pull up my slides to explain our work better. Just give me a second. I hope you can all uh, view my screen. Awesome, thank you very much. So at YY Ventures, um, we support early stage social business entrepreneurs who are fighting carbon emission, poverty and unemployment. In order to do that, we incubate social businesses by supporting young entrepreneurs with world-class training tailored consultation support, co-working space, business support services, and access to investors, enabling them to navigate their way towards launching a minimum viable product and raising the required capital for their business. Um, over the years, we've incubated enterprises such as Garbage Men, Max Tap Water, WizKid, Trans End, and Amar Lab that are working to solve some of the most complex challenges in our country, Bangladesh. And over the course of uh, the last year, uh, we successfully graduated 14 enterprises such as Deshi Ballers, Smart Mac, Wonder Woman through our YY Goshti incubation program in partnership with Netherlands Enterprise Agency, um, which are all improving lives of Bangladeshi people in marginalized communities. Um, and not just incubation, right? Like we've also started to invest in early stage untested social businesses that are solving some social and environmental challenges in our country. For example, Ob Obijatric Tourism, Impact Hub Dhaka, Shishir Water, these are some of our portfolio companies who not only re received funding, but also assistance um, in terms of connections with suitable venture investors, partners, and clients. Over the course of last year, we were also able to ensure funding for um, five such businesses, such as Tetra, Dream Water, Shapla, and Ritu, and we're very excited to see what they achieve next with the capital that they've received through our network. And in addition to this, um, the incubation and the investment, we also advise family foundations, impact funds, corporations, development agencies, and governments uh, to use the powerful model of social business to take their innovation and social impact agenda forward. Um, again, over the last, uh, over the course of last year, my friend and the managing director of YY Ventures, Shazib, has worked with FAO and local partners in the Central African Republic to empower 25 entrepreneurs through an agribusiness incubation program. And I'm also very happy to share that 
We have partnered with the UNIS Center and local educational institutions in East Africa to foster social business entrepreneurship in that region. And we've been on a journey since 2016 to make sure that the the impact that we make are not just one time, but is sustainable over the years. Um, and over the last seven years, we've supported 64 inspiring entrepreneurs who have created more than 1,500 jobs and impacted the lives of more than 150,000 people in Bangladesh. Um, and over this time, like we've managed 11 incubation programs, and I'm very proud to say that more than 63% of those businesses were led by women and will continue to do so in order to grow women's entrepreneurship in Bangladesh. I know I'm nearing the last minute, but I just want to say that our vision is bold. By the next you know, eight years, by 2030, we want to improve the lives of 2 million people in Bangladesh and beyond by investing in social businesses. And hopefully, fingers crossed, on the next Social Business Day, I look forward to sharing updates on our first social business venture fund that we want to launch this year. Till then, take care and keep supporting social businesses to create a new civilization in our world of three zeros. Thank you everyone for your time, for listening to me, passing it back to you, Lamia. Thank you so much, Sadia. It gives me immense joy to see, hear about all the female entrepreneurs that you're also supporting. I think that plays a huge role in what we're trying to create. Um, so thank you so much for that. Next, I would like to share the story of Ramin Viola Water. Um, in Bangladesh, an estimated 40 million people are threatened by arsenic exposure from drinking water. Um, Grameen Viola Water Limited was established as a joint venture company between world-renowned French company Viola and Grameen Healthcare Services Limited. In 2008, with a vision to provide safe drinking water and cooking water to the disadvantaged populations in arsenic-prone areas of rural Bangladesh at an affordable tariff. We will now see a video presentation of Grameen Viola Water Limited. May I now request the tech team to play the video presentation? An estimated 40 million people in Bangladesh are threatened by arsenic exposure from drinking water. It comes from groundwater provided by tube wells. It causes many types of illnesses and is fatal for an estimated 40,000 people yearly. In 2008, we decided to combine forces with Grameen Healthcare Services in order to provide safe drinking water to local communities. This led to a joint venture company called Grameen Veolia Water, a social business following the no loss, no dividend model, defined by the Nobel Peace Laureate, Professor Yunus. In 2009, based on Veolia know-how, we built a plant 50 kilometers east of Dhaka city. We run river water through our antibacterial treatment with activated carbon filtration and chlorination and sell it at an affordable price. In order to guarantee sustainable sales and understand the profile of community, we conducted research with a team led by a renowned anthropologist and set up a social welfare team. Now, five auxiliaries from the affected local communities are educating people on water issues and listening to their needs. আমার অভিজ্ঞতা হলো মানুষকে বুঝায় মানুষকে কাছে আনতে পারছি মানুষকে খাওয়াইতে পারছি পানিটা অনেকেই পানিটা খাইতে আছে আবার ঘরে নিতে আছে মনে হয় দুই এক দুই বছরের ভিতরে সবাই ঘরে নিয়ে যাইব হাউস লাইন সমান কেউ ওখানে আর কষ্ট করতে চায় না আর পানি সমন্ধে সবাই অনেক সচেতন হয়ে গেছে The number of Grameen Veolia Water Limited user households almost tripled By the end of 2018 Safe water has been distributed through a 17-kilometer pipe network to 55 public tap points where people can buy it at a low cost. We tackled health hazards by enabling private connections to people's homes. And by the end of 2018, 300 house connections have been established. The water is also connected to two schools, accompanied by safe drinking water awareness programs for teachers. A 20-litre jar distribution activity was developed to help meet our social objective and now serves 250 shops and companies. 
the quality of the treated water is regularly evaluated by internal and external laboratories and is held up to the highest standards. Today, almost 8,000 people have access to Grameen Veolia's Waters Water. Our sustainable model will in time enable us to invest our profits into research and provide a larger number of people with safe drinking water. We're very thankful to Grameen Veolia Water for serving the bottom of this pyramid and for their contribution to the local public health situation and to the sustainable development goals. Uh, we're glad that to see their um, you know, journey in solving and reducing the contamination of water in Bangladesh. Thank you to the team. Um, our next guest is Leonard Nima, founder of Studio Nima, who is joining us from Germany to talk about his No Going Back art project. Leonard has 12 years of social business and tech for a good work experience in more than 20 countries. He has incubated, grown, and consulted startups and established organizations around the globe. As a founder of Studio Nima, he implements and promotes social innovations with the private, philanthropic, and academic, and the public sector. He is also the co-founder of Nextcoder with a focus for on tech for good solutions. He is an educational advisor to the UNIS Sports Hub and building, uh, venture building advisor to the UNIS Environment Hub. Two organizations founded by Nobel Peace Prize laureate, Mohammed, Professor Mohammed Yunus. Leonard regularly acts as an expert and mentor in various incubation and acceleration programs, including the International Olympic Committee's Athletic, Athlete 365 Business Accelerator, the IOC Young Leaders Program, BMW Foundation's Respond Accelerator, and Siemens Stiftung Empowering People Network. Previously, he was an adjunct professor at the uh, Master of Social Entrepreneurship at Halt International Business School in San Francisco and London. Leonard worked as head of academia at the Grameen Creative Lab founded by uh, Nobel Peace Prize laureate, um, Professor Muhammad Yunus. Um, join us as we hear from Leonard Nima. Thank you very much, Lamia, for the introduction and big thanks also to Professor Yunus and Lamia Morshed for the invitation. Very happy to be here today. Um, I want to talk about our No Going Back art project. So basically, this is a collaboration between my team at Studio Nima and Rafael Bernardo, a designer based here in um, Munich in Germany. And it all started back in 2020 when Professor Yunus came up with this strong statement of no going back. With all the different crises going on out there, the climate crisis, the economic crisis that we have to all the conflicts, he said, this is now really a moment of no going back. We need to think about different ways, how we design our businesses, how do we design our economy, how do we design our society? And we really picked up this statement of no going back and thought about, okay, how can we make this actually bigger? And for us, Creativity, uh, the power of arts is a very, very powerful tool. So we thought about how can we actually translate this message of no going back into the powerful language of art. And with this reach many more people who we would otherwise probably not reach within our social business movement. So um, this is the, let's say the team behind, Professor Yunus for the inspiration. Thank you for this. Then I mentioned Rafael Bernardo, designer who is working on many different projects and the Studio Nima team. Um, Lamia, you said it, we have a lot of experience in the field of social business, been working with Professor Yunus now in many different constellations for more than 12 years. So this is kind of a little bit our journey. It started then in 2020 with the Academia Report on Social Business. The Academia Report on Social Business is a publication that started back in the days at the Grameen Creative Lab. Um, where we wanted to compile a good overview about all the different activities that are going on in the academic world. So much happening these days with all the UNOS social business centers, with the different programs and so on. And we really wanted to make sure that we show this. So for 2020, we took No Going Back as the main title for our academia report. And you can already see here on that little screen that we've then worked on that visual. So. We asked our friend Raphael if he can develop something. So he came up with this no going back visual, which from my point of view fits perfectly because it's kind of this labyrinth. You can get lost in this, but it's creative. It's visually appealing. 
Later on in 2021, we then thought about, okay, what else can we do with our no going back visual? So we produced a silk print. It's a limited edition of 100 prints. We took it to the Kunstlabor and we're planning to do a mural, but I'll go through this step by step. So the academia report I actually talked about, um, we have for 2020, not only a lot of university profiles, but we have very strong, powerful um, interviews with Professor Jeffrey Sachs. You might all know with Ron Guerin, one of our friends who has been around in the social business movement for quite some time. Michael Muller, former Under Secretary General at the United Nations. So a lot of very, very high quality, good content that we are very proud of. Then I mentioned the silk print. We made this edition of 100 copies hand printed here in Munich. And um, we then took it to Kunstlabor, very exciting project. So Kunstlabor is a former health office in Munich, and it's about an intermediate usage of this former office building. Um, think of it as five, six stories high, lots of offices, and they gave this away. They have this now for a five-year period, and they give this away to artists to interpret the office in their own way. So we were very happy that we've been chosen uh, with our No Going Back project as one of the rooms. And you can see it here. So our idea was how can we actually get this No Going Back message, this labyrinth thinking into the room. Um, Here's some more impressions of how it looks like. We had a big opening celebration in October last year. And whenever you're coming to Munich, uh, feel free to be invited, ping me and I'll give you a personal tour and the team will be happy to welcome you there. Now we thought about, okay, what could be the next step? And for us, one of the big things is our mural. I'll give another 15 seconds. Think of a mural as a big, big wall painting. And we want to do this in one of the major cities around the world. This is just a visual of how it could look like. We're currently talking to an artist in Sao Paulo, Brazil, whether he wants to do one, maybe in Berlin, maybe somewhere else on this planet. And this is where you can get involved as well. If you like the idea, you might want to check out our website, studionima.com, NGB. And thank you very much. Thank you so much for sharing that. I'm actually looking forward to getting a coffee for the office. I'll reach out to you. Um, so next up, may I please invite April Jam Smith, Managing Director of PS Kitchen, joining us from the United States. But to start with a little bit of an introduction, April Jam Smith is a Managing Director at a large investment firm on the equity derivatives team. In her life outside of the office, April spends time in Haiti and South Africa serving um, Sorry about that. Um, in her free time, um, April spends time in Haiti and South Africa, serving at various nonprofits and social businesses. She strongly believes in giving people a hand up over a hand out. Uh, this led her to opening PS Kitchen, a social enterprise in New York, New York City that uses 100% of its net profit to fund justice work while hiring those in need of a second chance. April received her bachelor's in engineering at MIT and her MBA at Columbia Business School. She's been featured in ABC, CBS News, Christianity Today, and highlighted in 50 outstanding Asian Americans in business. May I please invite her to share her journey of PS Kitchen uh, whenever you're ready. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Dr. Yunus and Nimia and the team for having me. My journey started about seven years ago when I got a chance to go to Haiti with Dr. Yunus and was completely inspired by the idea of having a social business and just thought, why can't I do the same thing in New York City? And this is the birth of our little social business baby, PS Kitchen. If the team can queue up the video for me, it'd be a great way for us to get to know what it's about. I'm Minnie Rowe. PS Kitchen is not your ordinary New York City hipster restaurant. It's a restaurant with a social conscience. It's a place where people in need can get a job, where they give a hand up, not a hand out. Co-founded by an Asian American immigrant, PS Kitchen is her way of paying it forward. I feel really good. Raul Rivera is feeling good now, but just a few years ago, he was at the end of his rope. I looked at myself one day and I said, what is it that you want? What do you want to do with your life? You know, and I said, you know, I, I just want I'm tired of using drugs. I'm tired of running around the street. Rivera grew up in the crime infested South Bronx in the 60s, 70s and 80s. He was addicted to heroin by the time he was 17, which led to a life in and out of prison. 
His lowest point was a decade ago when he was homeless and facing another stint behind bars for stabbing a man in a shelter while under the influence of drugs. That's when a judge told him it was either rehab or prison for seven more years. To make a change was really uncomfortable for me because I was so used to doing what I was doing, you know, using drugs, committing crimes and doing things of that nature. So I was so comfortable in that zone. But he stuck with rehab and eventually got clean. He emerged a changed man, ready to start a new chapter in his life. That's when he realized that his past was holding him back. It mind boggled me that I would come so dressed up to, to a job interview and expecting for this guy to hire me, you know, and I'm a changed man, things should be going right for me, but that wasn't the case. All I wanted is an opportunity. I just want somebody to give me a chance. Down the road in New York City's Times Square is a vegan restaurant called P.S. Kitchen that's helping people just like Rivera. Created by April Tam Smith, an Asian-American immigrant, the restaurant's mission is to offer employment opportunities for people whose backgrounds put them at a disadvantage. People with a criminal record, recovering drug addicts, and those who are struggling with homelessness. If I want to help in a sustainable way, in a way that it's going to help them help themselves in a way. Um, doing a business that can offer meaningful work opportunities was the way to go. A recent study by Prison Policy Initiative, a nonprofit bipartisan advocacy group, found that at its height in 2008, the unemployment rate for the formerly incarcerated was over 27 percent, which is higher than the unemployment rate during any historical period in U.S. history, including the Great Depression. As hard as we try to get the resumes ready, to try to, you know, get them new clothes and do different interviews, it's really, really hard at the end of the day if a company or an organization cannot get over that check. And just seeing someone with a difficult background might not necessarily give them that chance they need for the first open door. Tam Smith fully understands the struggle to find good employment. Her parents immigrated from Hong Kong when she was 11 years old, and she recalls the hardships of those early days. As an only child, she felt the burden to excel. She received scholarships to MIT, Columbia Business School, and is working full-time as a Wall Street banker. For all intents and purposes, she had achieved the American dream. But Tam Smith has bigger dreams of paying it forward. I am so grateful for the opportunity that I was given, that my family was given when we moved to the States. And I just felt like, Wow, like who am I that I got so many opportunities? Monica's dinner behind the curtain at 545. She threw herself into giving back, volunteering with trafficking victims, the previously incarcerated, and creating job opportunities for Haitians. That's when she came up with the concept for PS Kitchen, a place that provides employment to those in need is environmentally friendly, hence the vegan menu. And here's the really interesting part, gives away 100% of its profits to charity. It's definitely confusing for people. We don't take a salary, of course, at all. It's completely volunteering. Our goal is really just to have a place that gives away the max amount of profit. So when Rivera walked into that job interview for a dishwasher, fully expecting another rejection, he was overcome by their response. He says, can you be here tomorrow at 6 o'clock? And I looked at him and I said, you're hiring me? He says, yeah, be here tomorrow at 6 o'clock. I said, all right. So <laughs> I walk out the building and I go right here to the corner where the fire department is. And I just put my head up against the wall and I just started, I just started crying, man. <laughs> Tam Smith says witnessing employees like Rivera rebuild their lives is the reason she created P.S. Kitchen. As for Rivera, P.S. Kitchen is not just a job, it's his salvation. 
One thing that I would never forget that Raul has said to me, because of this job, I feel valuable. I have that dignity. I'm worth something to society again. I get up every morning looking forward to coming here. Tam Smith says PS Kitchen is only the beginning. She hopes to one day open a second location in New York City and even dreams of taking it to a global stage. I'm Minnie Rowe for Asian American Life. Thank you for sharing that. And I hope to see all of you at PS Kitchen at some point in New York. And thank you again for Dr. Yunus and the team for inspiring this to become a reality in New York City. Thank you so much uh, to everyone who joined us today and for sharing um, the amazing stories that you've heard. Um, to summarize what we've heard today, um, we've heard some wonderful stories of change. We've heard from Celine who shared her efforts of creating entrepreneurial mindset, um, building pride and agility within the Danone communities as a water access business development. Uh, we've got to know about her activities in development, developing skills and creating local water entrepreneurs, reducing poverty by providing better health and affordable prices and generating income for our local communities. Thank you, Celine and team, for the wonderful work you're doing to create access to water. We also heard from Sadia about her journey of creating a new civilization in Bangladesh, a future where everyone thrives by th supporting the youth. She hopes to fight poverty by creating entrepreneurs, and we cannot wait to help her with this. We heard from Grameen Veolia Water Limited, a social welfare team, educating people on water issues and understanding their needs to design solutions for the long term. I'm hopeful for the future where water will be safe and no longer a threat, and I'm hopeful for the future of our people and the world. We're also, um, we also saw the beauty of art and creativity as a powerful tool to create a world of three zeros from Leonard Mina, Nima. Um, I also got a sneak peek at the No Going Back project. Um, April, on the other hand, talked about her learnings from Haiti and how it inspired her to start the PS Kitchen, an organic kitchen. Um, she's truly inspired us to follow in her path of paying it forward, supporting and providing second chances to those who really need to rebuild their life. Uh, and I thank her for creating these opportunities without judgment. At the end of the day, I feel super energized with the passion and the Hello? vision that these... Um, Dr. Jan, I'm going to mute... Uh, Thanks. Um, to close this, I feel super energized with the passion and the vision that these amazing leaders are working uh, by affecting change and creating impact all over the world. Um, I hope you are as inspired as I am. Uh, with this, I would like to call this session to a close. Uh, our next plenary uh, will start in about, I think, in a few minutes. Um, it's called Education for New Civilization. Um, I inv invite you all to join us at the next session. Um, before we end, I would like to uh, quote Leonard, um, don't go back, it's a trap. Thank you, everyone. We wanted to take a picture. Sure. Could we have everyone's camera? Okay, tech team, could you please let us know? Okay, sir, done. Thank you so much. Thank you everyone for joining us today. I will look, see you in the next session. Bye, ciao. Bye, thank you, bye.